It happened again. It happened again. Again. And you know, I shouldn't even be upset. I, I expected this. But I thought, maybe. Just maybe. And you know, I really should have known after the last dark, but foolish me. If you don't know what I'm talking about, in uh, yesterday's Dragon Ball Super Chapter 75, Vegeta lost again. Again. And so Granola is the newest character to join a very long list of people that have defeated Vegeta. In case you're curious as to who's on that list, you have Gohan, Yajirobe, uh, Frieza twice, uh, Zarbon, Birder, um, Boo twice, you have Cell twice, you have Android 18, you have Beerus, you have Hit, you have Jiren, and you have Moro, and you have Granola. People that Vegeta has beaten include Goldo, Raccoon after he killed Raccoon after Goku beat him, um, Nappa after Goku beat him, um, did, did I say Dodoria? He got Zarbon eventually. Um, uh, he got Frost. He got Magetta. He got Kaba. Um, he got Android 19. He got Semi Perfect Cell. That's that's cool. But he's never taken a main arc win uh, in in all the all the years he's been around since like 1990. Never gotten a win. I mean, technically he beat Goku both of the times that they fought. If you don't count GT, then he's undefeated against Goku. That's fantastic. Um, but defeating a main arc antagonist never happened. But I thought just maybe that because Granola is not the main antagonist of this arc, maybe Vegeta could beat him. But no. No, he pulls out a new form. A new form. Just like he did against Jiren. Just like he did against 19 and 18. I mean, he beat 19, lost to 18. Just like he did against Cell. Just like he did against Frieza. Didn't matter. He lost. He lost like always. Um, and it's it's a it's a meme. It's a joke. It's a running gag at this point. Chris Sabat, the English voice for Vegeta, is in on the joke at this point. He understands how painful it is to be a Vegeta fan. I think Vegeta is the most interesting character in Dragon Ball. He's not my favorite. My favorite is Vegito, then Trunks, then Vegeta. Then Gohan, then Goku. Actually, no. Kick Goku out, put Piccolo there. I think Vegeta has had the most development as a character, except for maybe Piccolo Jr. Um, but the story has given Vegeta so, so much room to grow and adapt and mature as a character, except for in one area. He's chasing Goku's glory still. Well, I guess two areas. He's chasing Goku's glory, and he still can't beat a villain. And that's why I say the Dragon Ball Super feels like Goku and Vegeta are trapped in the Cell Saga. Because the way that they ended up in the Buu Saga, they shouldn't be like this. You know? Of course Goku is still want, gonna want to get stronger. But he's not... He shouldn't be as naive and stupid as he is in Super. Because in, in the Buu Saga, Goku understood that since he was dead... He's not going to always be around to protect the world. He can't be that hero anymore. So he was trying to get the next generation ready. Um, <clears throat> so he was trying to get Goten and Trunks prepared, basically. He stayed dead partially to help Gohan step up and be the next protector of Earth. Not that protecting Earth is a thing that's really mattered that much to Goku. It just kind of happens. They talked about it in the super manga. Um, English dub Goku is a lot more heroic than... He was ever supposed to be but regardless ever since he sacrificed himself to protect gohan in the cell saga he's been more mature you know he didn't want to fight majin vegeta in the boo saga he was like there's more important things to do right now vegeta i don't want to fight i don't think he would do that now i think he would be so excited to test his strength against vegeta that he wouldn't even care he was so excited to test his strength against other universes that he put the multiverse at risk he put the entire multiverse at risk of getting destroyed because he had to go remind lord zeno that there was a tournament coming up vegeta at the end of the boo saga 
who actually in the Boo Saga realized that his greed, his bloodlust, his urge to be the best and prove himself, and his desire to go back to the old cruel-hearted sand that he used to be, is what put the Earth in danger to begin with. That's why Majin Buu was resurrected, because of his foolish mistakes. So he sacrificed himself to try to defeat Buu and try to make things right. It didn't work. But at the end of the Buu Saga, he conceded that Goku is just a, a, a pure-hearted, battle-loving Saiyan, and for that reason, Vegeta will never surpass him no matter how hard he works, because Goku... Goku doesn't get stronger because he has to be better than somebody. He gets stronger because there are people that are better than him. He's like, I just want to keep growing, keep maturing and adapting as a fighter. I want to keep leveling up so that I can continue to have these strong challenges. Because Saiyan Saga Goku isn't holding a candle to Pycon. I know Pycon's a filler only character in the movie, but like, Pycon is a really good example of why Goku trains to get stronger. He just likes having a good challenge. That's his, that's his thing. But he's not stupid with it, you know? But in Super, these characters are trapped in the Cell Saga. And it's so silly to me. I, I can't believe it. I, I absolutely can't believe it. Because in the Cell Saga, obviously, Goku... Was Goku and Vegeta both decided to allow the androids to show up, not just find them and destroy them before, because they wanted a good fight. And that put the entire solar system at risk, uh, eventually. And Goku's like, oh, nobody kills Kakarot but me, I have to surpass Kakarot, blah blah blah. But after the Buu Saga, he doesn't care about that anymore, even in GT, right? And I have a video all about how they fucked up Vegeta, it's, I recorded it, I just haven't edited it yet. But it's like... All this time later, Vegeta is still taking L's, and it's so annoying. Dragon Ball has become the most repetitive series I've ever seen. It's just new antagonist shows up. Goku might fight him and then lose, and then Vegeta will show up and be like, hmm, I'm here to save the day, and then get his ass beat. And then Goku will come back and get the win. Every so often, Goku will actually get a chance to fight the villain earlier. But it's typically... Vegeta just gets bodied. Even after demonstrating a new level of power, Vegeta just gets bodied. I mean, because Goku didn't fight Cell until the Cell games. Vegeta fought Cell twice. Won one and then lost the other. And then he fought... And then he got beat by Cell again. Or was it Cell Jr.? I can't actually remember. But it's just like... I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know, man. I don't like frustratingly repetitive stories. I stopped watching The Flash because it got unbearably repetitive. I stopped watching Arrow because it got unbearably repetitive. And now it looks like I'm backing off of Dragon Ball. I honestly... Because there's a lot of people that are like, oh, I'm never reading Dragon Ball again. And then and a month later, they're like, oh, that chapter was bad. That's not going to be me. Chapter 75, I'm done. I can't see myself coming back next next month to read the next chapter. Because no matter what happens, I don't care. Especially because Toyotaro can't even seem to get this character's, char this character's personality consistent. In the Moro arc... He apologized to the Namekians for his past sins. He acknowledged to Moro that he's been a terrible person historically, and he's likely going to hell when he dies. But it's like, okay, I, I'm a better man now than I was then. But in this arc, he's like, oh, Granola, we're gonna, I'm gonna wipe out the entire rest of your tribe. <laughs> like, what the fuck? It's been one arc. And then to have Piccolo say, the Vegeta's not the kind of person to underestimate his opponent. Zarbon, Goku, Cell, 18, uh, Birder and Jace, Beerus, Hit, Frieza again, Boo, Goku Black, Zamasu, Broly, Moro, Granola! He, he underestimates everybody. And then, like, some of the things that he was saying in the chapter, talking about, like, his fighting ego and his battle spirit, and the more damage he takes, the the prouder he is. I'm like, what is he talking about? I've never heard him talk like this before. And I've seen every episode of Dragon Ball that there is, except for Heroes. So what's going on? This is weird. This is new. I just, I don't understand why Toyotaro writes Vegeta the way that he does. Um, 
it really felt like Toriyama had an idea of where he wanted Vegeta to end up at the end of the original Dragon Ball story. And that was kept pretty consistent going into GT, but Super, Super fucked it all up, honestly. And I'm over it. I'm really over it. I, I, I don't know. I'm not excited for the anime to make its return. I'm not excited to keep reading this. I'm not gonna keep reading this. I'll watch the movie if there's no fighting in it. I don't want. I don't want to watch Vegeta lose again. Sorry. But uh, yeah, that's just. I'm not even mad about it anymore. It's just like I. I don't care. I don't care. I can't keep watching Vegeta lose every single month, every single episode, every single arc, whatever. There's just no point. But um. All that being said, I'll see you guys later.